The question for me when it comes to Uber five years down the line, you know, long-term play, how disrupted their business model is going to be from uh, the rollout of autonomous vehicles and robo taxis. Right. And I know, uh, you know, it's shaking, not I'm the right time head, to <laughs> talk about it, but when you look at Waymo and how successful they have been in the three cities that they have launched, I mean, the part of the call was about how Uber is integrating Waymo inside their app. Because what is they, Waymo? Waymo is Google's uh, autonomous driving unit. I mean, they have about 300 cars uh, in San Francisco, similarly in a couple of other cities, Arizona. And what they have shown is their technology is ready for prime hmm. time. I mean, wow. they have to get regulatory approvals to do it at scale. But that changes the unit economics completely. Right now, we are talking about a business model where cost per mile is like 5 to $7. Waymo can, at scale, they can do it three or four times cheaper. So suddenly, the take rate model gets disrupted. Now, again, it's not hit prime time, but that's what Tesla is striving for. And the risk for Uber and Lyft is they will get disintermediated. But hmm. so, so, OK, so it's not the fact that Uber would just go get a bunch of robo taxis and use them, and eventually that would pay off over time because they're not paying drivers. It's not that scenario. It's not that scenario because uh, both these companies want to roll out the robo taxis themselves as opposed to using an Uber. And even if Uber was to get involved, their take rates would be way lower than 30%. Right now, they are getting 30% of every ride. Let's say it's a $50 ride. Uber makes at least 30%. That's a pretty healthy take rate. With the uh, you know autonomous driving equation, first, Tesla wants to go solo. They don't want to partner with any of the ride-sharing guys. That's one risk. Waymo is on Uber, but my sense is they also want to kind of broaden out their reach, and they will deploy the technology themselves. And uh, in fact, Alphabet allocated $5 billion in CapEx this quarter on Waymo's rollout. So all right. I mean, all right, it's bad enough that I get in a car with somebody I've never met, a mm -hmm. total stranger. That's crazy enough to think about. Am I getting in a car that's a robo-taxi? Is that really going to be a thing, and if so, when? I mean, these vehicles are monitored. So oh, if you by the way, I have a Vespa scooter, by the way, so I don't necessarily need them for the shore, but go ahead. But just go to San Francisco <laughs> right now. You can order a Waymo ride. You can. You can. Wow. And, and just get that experience. I think every consumer who has taken a Waymo ride loves that experience. Really? Uber talked about They acknowledged the threat on their call. But they yeah. also think the rollout will be slow, and they are positioning themselves by seeking all these partnerships. They par they're partnering with BYD for 100,000 vehicles. That was big news last week. Well, then why would it be exclusionary? Like, if Tesla rolls it out themselves, why is it that I, it just means more competition? It doesn't mean it's exclusionary. Like with Lyft, like you guys price compare with Lyft, there's yeah. room for more than just one. There is, but then it goes back to being the scale player and having that 30% take rates. The reason why Uber has done much better than Lyft is because it's a scale player. And it can charge that 30% take rate because it has the liquidity in its marketplace, the supply demand matching, the best ETAs, the most options that it can offer to its riders. So like marketplaces are all about scale. The moment you have more than three or four competitors, right now it's a duopoly and still we see how badly Lyft is doing relative to Uber. If you have more competition, that's not good news. But again, this is for the route. This quarter was solid. Nothing goes wrong for Uber until hmm. this robo-taxi rollout plays out. So we're talking a few quarters out scenario. Market cap for Uber, $132 billion. Market cap for Lyft, $4 billion. What happened? Well, I mean, Uber clearly has the scale. And DoorDash has done similarly very well on the food delivery side. So you, you've got two scale players when it comes to ride sharing and food delivery. And they have the most supply. I mean. One challenge with this business model is gross margins can never be as attractive as your software companies. Yep. And that's what we keep finding with Uber. It's like they're still a 40% gross margin business at an aggregate level.